nitpicks. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Nitpicks. And Alan, I see that. So this is actually the end of the podcast. Uh, the podcast was over two hours long. We talked about all six episodes. And, and we Chubbs. Deci- and Chubbs. Can't forget about Chubbs. Uh, we decided that we're going to, instead of putting out a two-hour episode, we're just going to put out like six 20-minute episodes or something like that of each well, individual. One, on... <laughs> well, some, one of them will be like 40 minutes and one of them will be like two minutes. That's but, yeah. true. Yeah. But we're, we're, I'm going to split them all up. And so this will be one of those six episodes. It'll be the first one, obviously. You're not going to have this intro being like episode four. No, I'm just going to reuse this intro for all. Oh, okay. But, but I'm going to leave that part in the intro as well. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the I Seen That Pod. I'm Sam, and with me, as always, is Alan. Um, so today we're going to be talking about Black Mirror Season 4, which is going to be very exciting because obviously the last video we did on Black Mirror has done quite well. It's one of the most viewed videos. Um, but before we get into the podcast, we are going to have a special word from our po- from our sponsor. Take it away, Alan. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> you caught me off guard. Uh, we actually do have a sponsor of the show, which is Boss Play. Which is a uh, an escape room. Do you, have, do you guys have escape rooms in the UK? What, like rooms you have to escape from? Yeah, like they got puzzles and you got to like figure things out and find keys and go through all that stuff. I'm blown away by how e- how how you took that on the chin. I was expecting more of a reaction from you. <laughs> Man, I'm a professional. I can't, I can't. Hostile help. takeover of your podcast. <laughs> so we have a sponsor that's in California. But they have two different uh, escape rooms that are a, a Prohibition era and a chocolate factory uh, escape room. And uh, I think they're coming into the UK, but they're very expensive. So, like, kind of like not a thing that we massively are into. But that one sounds great. Yeah, I would love to go <laughs> to lo- one of those. They they're a lot of fun. But uh, no, thanks for having me on your podcast. Uh, no, it. there's no worries. <laughs> like, I'm happy to have you on. <laughs> um, yeah, so Black Mirror season season four. Yeah, what were your overall? What's your of the season, the whole season? What's your overall opinion of it? Good, bad, in between? Um, I I think it's probably the worst season. Yeah. Um, but it it has two episodes that are better than anything in season three. So it's kind of, yeah, so, so it's, it's kind of a very, it's a very mixed bag for me. Yeah. And I think the reason why it fails as an entire season is because there's a repetition of themes. Yes. Um, and there's also, there's also just like a general, like three dull episodes consecutive, consecutively, like the first three for me are like some of the like lower level black mirror episodes and it's like one after the other and it got to a point where i was really excited for season four and i was halfway through the third one and i just left it for two weeks (laughs) and like that's not how i should be feeling about like black mirror i should be like dying to see it when season three came out i watched it all the night it came out so this is the first one that i've been able to watch pretty much straight through i think i watched three and three and, yeah. uh, all the other ones like affected me emotionally too much to where I couldn't, I couldn't keep watching them. I was like, yeah, like too heavy. And this one had, didn't have that at all. I, don't, I can't think of anything. I don't there think, were a lot of happy endings. Yeah. There was a lot more happy endings. And even the dark ones were kind of, you saw they, them coming. They kind of fell flat. Yeah. They fell flat. But, uh, uh, yeah, yeah I, I, mean, I agree. I think this is the worst season. I think, like we kind of talked about it a little bit on the last episode of Black Mirror where it's it would be it's a, a high bar to keep hitting and having yeah. original unique ideas that are you know just amazing and it seems like they're running out of steam 
with this season? I personally think it's a it's an ego thing with Charlie Brooker. Mm. I I think he should really be sort of taking more of a step back um and letting other writers do episodes. Yeah. Because um I have a huge problem with this season. Um but I'll get to that when we talk about that specific episode. Is it uh, Black um, Museum? Yeah. That's my I I I really struggled with that episode. Um, yeah. cause if that, th- for me, that if it, episode may have ruined Black Mirror. Yeah. <laughs> like, so for me, it's entirely. either, it's either an okay episode or the worst episode of all. And it all depends on if it, it, so it's universe for the episode. So my, my understanding of Black Mirror before season four was every episode was independently its own universe. None of them were really connected. Yeah. They had some things that like connected them just as like a fan service type thing, but not, not like, Oh, this is the same place. Yeah. So if black museum is its own independent universe that also has all these other ones and not, does, does that make any sense? I, I, I've been having yeah. a hard time. You, um, you're making sense. Okay. I'm going to break the bad news to you though. Yeah. Black museum has basically said that every episode is in the same universe. Like officially, is that the, is that officially, like canon? Officially canon, officially canon, every episode is part of the same universe. Yeah, that's disappointing. Because if it was it its own universe. It doesn't make any sense. That was it doesn't connected. make any sense. Yeah, no. If it was its own universe, if that, if that episode was its own universe, but had everything else happen in it, that's one thing. You know, it's like, okay, that's an interesting idea, but kind of not that great. But if they're like, nope, everything is connected, then no, it's awful. So that's what they've done. Yeah, no, that is what they've done. Yeah. They've said everything is connected. And I don't understand why they would need to do that. And for me, it just feels like an ego thing. Um, and there's two levels. The first level is like, Oh, look at all the other episodes we've had, like this idea of museum and like, Mm -hmm. look at all these things that are like now literal trophies, literal cabinets, like tributes. Like this is, this is what we've done, which is a massive ego thing. And then it goes into, oh, they're all connected together, which story and narrative wise just makes it all more confusing (laughs) and it, it lessens it. Because 15 million merits, like, understanding that that takes place in the same world as all the other episodes really does lessen it. Because now you're watching it and you're thinking, like, oh, are they, are they cookies? Are they, like, consciousness clones? Are they inside some sort of app? Mm. Like, and that's just not the point of the episode. And um, they could very easily do that. Yeah. They could very easily try and justify it. Because now they're going to have to try and really scrutinize to make it all make sense. And if there is a season five, and I think there probably will be a season five, um, I'm worried that a lot of it will be trying to make it all fit together. Yeah. Which is just dumb. I, 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 I think it's dumb. Yeah. I hope this and is also, the last season, really. Like, it's, n- I don't think it will be. <laughs> no. Um, but then also the guy in the museum is personally connect- connected to all the things. So, he is basically connected to every single Black Mirror episode. And considering that he works in this sort of special tech, it it really does limit um, how you interpret the episodes now. Yeah. Uh, which is just a shame. But should, should we go through them one by one in order? Yeah. And yeah, go back to the Black, Black Museum. Okay, so U.S. Callister, which you got you got into a bit of an argument with me on Twitter over. <laughs> I I like this one. I thought this one was great. I I really liked it. The more I think about this episode, the more I dislike it. Really? Why Why don't you like yeah. it? Yeah. Well, let's before we get uh, into that, what let's talk. Let's say what the premise is. Um, the premise is, um, uh. <laughs> like a, a techie a techie guy who makes video games virtual reality online video games set in a spaceship who's really smart uh has a lot of pent-up repressions and like 
bitterness towards the people he works with. So he is a machine that can completely clone someone based on a little bit of their DNA. <laughs> and he puts them in a Star Trek machine and he forces them all to play Star Trek with him. And if they don't play with him, he gets angry and hurts them. Yes. Um, and one girl gets put there and she's so gosh damn smart and talented at <laughs> hacking that she's able to escape there within the first day of being in there and they they are able to phone the real versions of themselves and get them to oceans 11 it <laughs> and steal the dna <laughs> And distract him enough for them to run away into a black hole and kill themselves. See, I think I, I made a mistake by letting you set up the premise, because you definitely sold that with your bias of it being bad. Oh, how would you describe it then? Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's exactly what happened. No, it's, no, it's, it, you're, you're right. You're accurate. Just, uh, Ocean's Eleven, it really. They do Ocean's <laughs> Eleven, it. They're like, do, 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 do. We take the DNA. You'll order the pizza. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and then he like goes back into the game and it's like, duh, 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 duh. and she's like, where is everyone? Duh, 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 duh. And they're like trying to kill themselves. Well, yeah. I, I thought the acting, I thought Jesse Plemons and uh, Jimmy Simpson, I thought they did great. Uh, you mean Matt Damon? Yeah, Matt, not Matt, not Matt Damon. Um, no, it's Matt, it's Matt Damon's brother. He, he was so good at being, at, at being both, at being, you know, just kind of beat up and worn out and just lowly and then coming in and being this like dictator. I thought he did a great job okay. going between the two. Well, I, okay. Well, my problem with it yeah, fundamentally is that. They spend so much time making him a human being, yes. like a likable, interesting character uh -huh. that has like a lot going on. And then the second he clones the girl that he has a crush on, he just becomes like a big nasty man that they need to stop. See, um, I, and he I, stops being sympathetic and like we stop. I, I just don't understand why they set him up as a protagonist and then immediately turn him into an antagonist mm. with no real sense of nuance. And it really does become like he's the bad guy and he's done all these bad things and they need to stop him from being bad. And actually, like, there's no, there's no grays really. It's just kind of like you immediately are supposed to dislike him then. Yeah. He, the thing is, if you play a video game, if you go and play Grand Theft Auto and you go and you run over all these uh, NPCs, the non-player characters, that would be almost equivalent to what he's doing, right? Like, yeah, I think his, his switch when he goes into the video game, it, it like I wish they would have made it more clear what his perception or his understanding of... I, they're cookies, right? I, that's fair to call them, right? Yeah, yeah. What his under no good damn cookies. <laughs> what his understanding of that is, because if to him it's just a bunch of code, then what's it matter if he tortures them and he sends a kid into space and does but all these terrible do they, things? Do they ever even slightly articulate that perspective? No, or that like viewpoint. And you could say, oh, Black Mirror is just being subtle. But like, if you look at all the other episodes, they just, re they're like constantly shoving like what they're trying to say down your throat. Yeah. So like, I think the idea of them just being code to him mm. is like not something that they even thought about, <laughs> that they even thought about like bringing into the story. Yeah. And it's a real shame because it's kind of just like, I'm, s I'm sorry, but it's just like, we enjoy like hurting these these coded characters in a game we get like some sort of twisted thrill from it mm -hmm. like you know i play Re i used to play red dead redemption and like my favorite thing to do in that game would be to tie people up and put them on the train tracks <laughs>
See, like, and then in the context of this Black Mirror episode, I feel like an, a complete scumbag saying yeah. that. Uh-huh. But like, we we all we've all played these games. I mean, like, it, it's strange that we get that thrill from it. And like, it's such a perfect topic for Black Mirror to go into. But for some reason, they they spent all their time on this Ocean's Eleven like <laughs> plot to escape rather than exploring the moral implications of hurting a computer character that thinks it's conscious and believes it's a human being, which would have been really fascinating. Uh, there's just there's just so much in it that like they could have done yeah. that they just didn't do. Like, I thought for a second that he would actually start a real relationship with the girl at work. Yes. So I thought be that would have been dating interesting. her. Yeah. And then the, the, the computer version of her is like being tortured. Yeah. That, that would have been How fascinating. How twisted having, would that be? Having a relationship, like a, a positive relationship and a negative relationship with the same, same with person. The same person. Yeah. 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 Um, do you think you, dislike it more because you expected more from it uh i think it's like 50 50 because like i i immediately saw the the potential of a fantastic interesting story Mm -hmm. with this setup um and i i really my favorite part of the episode was when they were doing star trek missions and they were clearly uncomfortable Yes. Like, that was really funny, and I wish they'd done more of that. Like, the opening scene is just, like, a clone of a standard Star Trek episode, and it's like, why wouldn't they show that they were uncomfortable, show that there was something a bit wrong? Mm. Rather than, It felt like they were just like, oh, let's just pay homage to Star Trek, like, because we can. But yeah, from so- a narrative perspective, if they were to imply, oh, there's something a bit strange here... It would have been a really cool way to open the episode. Yeah, I really liked when they paused the first time they paused yeah. for him to get pizza, and then everyone broke character and like took a break and stuff. And that I thought that was a great uh, character moment for all the people stuck in there. Also, when he, the guy was begging to get killed, I thought that was great too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, no, I um, agree. I think this has it has a lot more potential, and I may have interjected my own. Uh, like I may have filled in some of the gaps to make myself enjoy yeah. it more, you know, like, because if, if he saw them as code, then the question is, was he really a villain? Because what's it matter? Like if you are willing to go and drive through a crowd of people in Grand Theft Auto and not be a bad guy into the real world, does he deserve to die because he's torturing what he would perceive as code? If that's the case. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And they never once even go there. Mm -hmm. And it's not, there's not even a line of dialogue to go into that perspective, which I find really strange. Yeah. Because it's like, if you live in a world where you can have cookies of, and it's like so easy and like, it doesn't even take any work. Like, why would you spend the time writing a character and write, like, designing a character and putting that into a game when you can just, like, get someone to agree to have their consciousness be put into a game. Because obviously that's more real. Like, you get genuine responses. Do you of, think like, this is the the prequel to Wreck-It Ralph? Uh, I think that if it was a prequel to Wreck-It Ralph... Um, it wouldn't make sense for them to look so animated. Like I think, you know, I don't understand how they would how they would do that. Well, they I'm would... not sure if Re- Wreck It Ralph is canon in the Black Mirror <laughs> universe because I didn't see any Wreck It Ralph like stuff in the museum. I oh, mean, I might have been that's wrong. True. Yeah, and like I'm pretty sure like no one said the phrase "I'm gonna wreck it." <laughs> I, I think, but like, there's a good point. It's a good theory. <clears throat> yeah, Wreck It Ralph is just a bunch of cookies. But they like they, the girl that got turned into the alien monster. They d- just did that, but they animated them so it would be more kid friendly. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, that's a that's a cool concept. Yeah, <laughs> you don't you don't have to say maybe that. Wreck It maybe Wreck It <laughs> Ralph two will like involve cookies. It'll just like, be super dark. 
they have like Ralph's consciousness like inside someone else's brain <laughs> and they have to share a brain. That, oh, that one. Oh, that was so bad. Um, but no. But also, <laughs> also, like, I, I think like in US, USS Callister, um, everything to do with the technology aspect of it is really dumb. Yes. Like ridiculously dumb. Like it's so stupid. Like, how does it work? So if I was to t- take your spit from a cup, would you like take in your mind, you would take a drink and then suddenly wake up on the spaceship? Like, how does memories work? Like, how much do you remember up until that point? Yeah, that's a good point. Cause they, and like, well, they just wake I'm up. Sure, and you'd I... have to scan someone's brain, like at least. <laughs> like with the DNA, you'd be able to make like a baby clone of that person, but like you wouldn't be able to have that person exactly how their memories work. Yeah, like an exact clone of them. Yeah, because at least with like, at... Uh, White Christmas, the chip is implanted in her head for weeks. Exactly. Where this was. See, that's when they cared. Yeah. That's when they gave, <laughs> like, they don't, they don't care anymore. They're like, they're like, ah, it doesn't matter. Well, like, it feels like DNA. they're like, we and, have everything established. So if we just this, make everything one universe, then we don't have to come up with new concepts. We'll just use what we already have. Yeah. So like before this episode, like consciousness and, and like cookies and, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that was only explored in White Christmas. Did they do any of that in season three? Um, I'm trying to think. I don't think they did. Oh no, San Junipe, they sort of did. Yeah, that, that this but one was more of like you're in a virtual world. It's yeah. not like there's a clone of you, but it... there sort of is for when you die. Yeah, but by this logic, it would like because these cookies and these consciousness are treated like they don't really have rights. So that means if it's in the same universe, because he specifically says they works at San Junipe Hospital, mm-hmm. then the idea of you dying and going to San Junipe is like taken away because everyone's being cloned and everyone's consciousness <laughs> is being uploaded into like various like random inanimate objects. So like, this is part of the problem is now that San Junipe doesn't feel as strong because you realize that in this world, you've got your consciousness in video games. You've got your consciousness in like cookies, like cleaning the house and making toast for you. And like it, 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 that's the problem is because they're almost like not really human. They're just kind of like a a exact copy of you. Yeah. So now San Junipe, they don't go to ha- they don't go to the special afterplay afterlife and live happily. They just get copied. I mean, if you took anyone's DNA, you could just do that now because it's part of the same universe. Just have a hundred copies of Max just loaded up yeah. on the computer. Yeah, and I could just torture him in different <laughs> ways. Yeah, the the thing that bothers me about season four, especially with the shared universe idea is a lot of the technology, even when it was similar, there was like an offshoot somewhere, like a clear, like if I'm thinking between um, the entire history of you and white Christmas, they both have the eye, the, the eye things, the eye things, but they're, they're operated differently. They have different functions. One is recording everything. One is like enhancing things. Like narratively, it's just not focused on in the same way. Yeah. Whereas, in this, they focus on, like, the whole idea of, like, what is consciousness and what is being human. Like, in at least three episodes. Yeah, in at least three episodes. So that's kind of strange. Um, yeah, so, so you're able to make exact clones of people with their DNA. Okay, whatever, fine. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. You can do that. But then it goes even more dumb. Because they're in the game and they're able to, like, phone people, like, and talk to them. And it's like, what microphone are you connected to? Like, how are you able to transmit your voice? Like, h- how does that work? I don't know. I, that that part I don't really have that much of an issue with. Because but, if they can connect to the internet, I think 
because like your voice right now is coming from the UK and I'm in Thailand. So it's all being digitized and replayed. So I would think you would be able to figure out a way if you're a super smart hacker. Like, but if I was inside the computer, I would not be able to talk to you via Skype. You, you might if you tried hard enough. If your life depended I don't think on I it. Could. <laughs> I just found it all a bit like uh, all a bit ridiculous because yeah. because she was in there like a day and she's already figured out how to do everything and how yeah. to get out and like the exact plan. And when the first plan like fails or whatever, she immediately comes up with a new plan. And it's like, I just was watching it and was like, well, she's going to escape, like, no matter what happens. Like, she's determined enough. Like, everyone else has given up. What and then, you- then, like, she's able to threaten herself with leaking, like, sexual pictures of her. And it's like, what? Why would you go and break into your boss's house? <laughs> like, <laughs> it- it did, it just was a bit ridiculous and far fetched, and like I did, I wouldn't have minded it if they were actually like telling an interesting story, but it got so black and white, like oh we're being kidnapped by this man and we need to escape, and that was it. Like there was no there was nothing else going on past that. So so despite the half an hour of us seeing him being a social reject and like understanding things and like picking up on certain certain levels going on he's just going to become a big bad man that wants to play star trek with them and they've got to stop him and the thing that annoys me the most about it is that star trek episodes are nuanced and the villains aren't just villains they're like people that have like understandable motivations and goals so like the thing that they're paying homage to is like doing a better job of telling a story yeah, I uh, I hate how you ruin things. Sorry, for me, I really Sam. don't. I really don't <laughs> like this episode. I no, I liked it when it first was there, and then I've just been thinking about it, and it's been like a like a like a like a uh, like a boil or a cyst yeah. like in my mouth. I've just been picking <laughs> at it, and it's just getting like really like I'm finally starting to get the root of it, and I'm like, oh yeah, it's really not good. Like I actually. I actually like, I'm starting to think lesser and lesser of it, but I do like the concept and I do like the visuals and yeah. I do like the jokes. So like, it's got that for it. But well, Jimmy Simpson's speech at the end, I thought was really great. Right before you. Jimmy. The, that's his name, right? Did I just make it up? I don't know. The actor's name is Jimmy Simpson. Well, Matt Damon. No, no, no. That's Jesse Plemons. Oh, the skinny one. Yeah, yeah. The guy from uh, Always Sunny and... Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's Jimmy yeah. Simpson. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Um, well, the thing that bothered me is that I, I was kind of hoping that there would be some sort of emotional, dramatic payoff with them. Mm-hmm. But, like, it was just so on the surface level of, oh, I'm, I was an asshole to you even though you made this company and it's kind of like that doesn't really have any weight because outside of this computer game like he's still going to be like that yeah and what i would have liked is for him to interact with the star trek crew and then to interact with his real like in real life crew and like for him to like make a change based on that because i thought he was the protagonist but then he wasn't the protagonist and then this girl was the protagonist, but she didn't make any changes either or yeah. learn anything either. She was just kidnapped, but like, she's not really kidnapped, but like she is and she wanted to escape. But like, compared to what other cookies are forced to do, like other cookies probably are forced to do all kinds of like degrading, like horrible stuff. Like we saw White Christmas, like, you're just made to sit in emptiness for like months and then forced to just do really menial tasks like compared to that like playing star trek is like not that difficult (laughs) like i would take if i lived in that world and i knew what cookies were Uh i would be like oh i'm a cookie oh okay like i'm just gonna make the best of this because this is just what i am would you kiss matt damon yeah (laughs) 
<laughs> I don't understand why he took away the genitals. I find that really strange. And I think the reason why they did that was because they didn't want people to think his character was was sexually perverted. Yeah. And like the thing is is if he was sexually perverted, he would be more interesting and they would have to write more like more they'd have to spend more effort like figuring out like what was going on and like the greys. But like tell me tell me this, like if you had a game, wouldn't you wanna put like someone in that game? Like put a, a cookie of them in that game. Wait, say it again. If I if, if I If you if you had a game wouldn't you wanna have like a cookie of someone that you know personally in that game? To that like you could just be like just to torture? You don't have to torture them, but oh, like I have to. I would put I would torture Taylor in a game. Yeah, like it's not the real Taylor. Yeah. Like, you can turn the game off and then hang out with Taylor. Well so, I would like, want to torture him in real life. Why he was this big bad man. Because all he was doing was was doing what most of us would do. Well that yeah, that that was my point was I thought the question was is he really a bad person, right? Like, if you're on the outside and you don't know what happened in the game, right? If you're just his co-workers, like, it's just a tragedy. You know, everyone was mean to him. Everyone, you know, just crapped on him all the time. And then he goes home for Christmas break and dies in his video game. Yeah, I feel sorry for the man. Yeah. What would have been interesting is if, like, all the stuff that he did was exposed somehow. mm and then he had to deal with the social, like, kind of consequences of what he was doing. Um, but yeah, I think we're done with this episode. Yeah. Is there anything else? I don't think so. I'm, I Arc, feel done. Archangel uh, is number two, I think. Wow, that was a great conversation. It's too bad we disagreed about everything the whole time. Uh, can you tell yeah. me about your YouTube channel? Uh, it's called Nitpicks. Um, check out my review on Bright with Will Smith in. Uh, follow now, you me said on Twitter at nitpicks. This is your favorite movie of 2018 so far, right? Uh, yeah. Have you watched any other movies yet? No. So that it has to be. Well, it wasn't out in 2018. But you watched it in 2018. I mean, this is an outro you're going to repeat in all the videos, so <laughs> let's just keep it short, yeah? Nope, let's keep everyone going. to listen to let's me talk going. about Bright six times. What else What else about Bright? Will Smith it's is your good. favorite actor? Let's go through all the Will Smith movies. That no, was something that upset me on Twitter. Oh, come on. <laughs> but no, you can follow us on Twitter at I Seen That Pod.